In today's video, we'll be doing a listener write-in. Please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications if you have not done that already. I am striving to get to 2,500 subscribers. We made it to 1,000, woohoo! Without further ado, this listener write-in comes from a comment. And the comment was on the video of how to find a good therapist. The person who wrote in with this comment asked, after how many sessions should you judge your therapist? How many years have you been in therapy? Can therapy sessions be overwhelming so much that for a day or two after therapy, you are reflecting on why I said this and so on? How many sessions should you judge your therapist? I don't know if it's like a matter of sessions, but I think some important things to think about. Are you benefiting from the sessions together? Do you feel like you can build trust with your therapist? Does the therapist have good, strong boundaries? Do they make you feel safe and at ease? Do you feel supported by your therapist? Is your therapist a good listener? And do they understand what you're saying to them? Maybe more than anything, I would say the is your therapist a good listener and do they understand what you're saying to them are probably two of the most important elements because if your therapist can't hear what you're saying, it, it, it's really the whole point largely of therapy, right? It's, it's a platform to be heard after how many sessions. If you, if you do want like a kind of gauge for how many sessions, I would say give it anywhere from two sessions to, I don't know, maybe eight sessions, like two weeks to two months. It is a good thing to at least try to give your therapist a chance, but if it's a waste of time and you know that and it doesn't feel right and you feel like there's a better therapist out there for you, I would advise to find that therapist, but also to make a list of what you want in a therapist before I found the therapist I found when I returned to therapy in my later 20s, after not going to a therapist for like eight years, I made a list of all the qualities I wanted in a therapist, and the therapist I found had all of those qualities. So sometimes you just need to provide clarity for yourself, and that will guide you toward the proper help. In total, I have probably done about seven years of therapy, but currently I am not consistently seeing a therapist. I have a therapist who's kind of on call. I really only see her for EMDR sessions. EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing. I use that for PTSD or CPTSD symptoms if they arise. They're more infrequent than they used to be, so I see a therapist less frequently for them. So currently I probably only see that therapist who I have on call less than once a month. Can therapy sessions be overwhelming so much that for a day or two uh, you're reflecting on what you said during session? Yes, definitely. I think especially when you first start therapy, it can be very hard talking about things that were upsetting. Sometimes talking about upsetting things can the pa from the past can be triggering. And so you might feel the same kind of emotions or physical feelings come up. So you might ask your therapist if they have any recommendations for keeping you calm between sessions. One of the reasons I like EMDR or yoga or somatic experiencing these therapeutic methods of working through trauma is that they get into the physical body so they kind of defuse the traumatic events from causing as much of um, a physical and emotional response that's overwhelming. So one thing you might want to incorporate in your therapy sessions or talk with your therapist about is if they have any experience with somatic experience. EFT is another alternative for getting into the physical and emotional space. Yoga, as I mentioned, Acupressure has been one of my favorites. Making therapy easier can be really about managing the physical responses. On the Healthy Writer channel, I do have breath work, which I definitely recommend. 
as one method of managing yourself between sessions and just in life in general. But that's a great topic to bring up with your therapist as well because they can help guide you if they have experience with that. Additionally, I thought of another thing after I originally filmed the video. One thing I used to enjoy doing to kind of manage feelings that came up post-sessions would be to journal, to write down any thoughts or worries I, or concerns I had from any sessions. Writing down those leftover feelings or concerns can be a great jumping up point, jumping off point for your next session with your therapist. And when you write things down, you don't have to remember them or keep them in your head. So I, I think it offers a sense of relief to write them down as well. I hope that's helpful. Thank you so much for leaving your comment and being open for me to answer it on the channel as opposed to in the comment. I figured a lot of other people would have similar questions. So I thought it would be helpful to share as a listener write in. Everyone, please take care, and if you have a question about creativity, psychology, or anything else that speaks to you, I'll provide the Google link below so you can write in the form your question, and I'll see you all soon. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Take care. Mwah.